Welcome to Mount Lebanon Lutheran Church in Pittsburgh for Wednesday evening Advent devotions. We continue tonight reflecting upon the meaning of light in the world. And on this night, we think of light in regards to the matter of peace. The devotion tonight is called Peaceful Light. Earlier this evening, my wife Barbara took our dog for a walk through our neighborhood in Mount Lebanon. She enjoys the evenings of Advent. So many homes are decorated with lights and it's very peaceful to walk amid these beautiful lights of the homes in our neighborhood. Shortly before they came back into the house, I was actually inside the home and I began to hear dogs barking and I could recognize the barking and the growling of our own dog. When my wife came into the house, I inquired what had happened and I already knew what had happened. Our dog had met up with another dog walking through the neighborhood and they began to bark and growl at each other. They began to lunge at each other in an aggressive way. Such is the way of animals. A number of years ago, I read a textbook on personality psychology by a professor at Northwestern University. And in that book, he cited a study by which they sought to determine the comparison of human beings to animals with regard to aggressiveness. And the study concluded that human beings, compared to animals, we are a moderately aggressive species. In other words, we don't always resolve our differences peacefully, not even close. We are prone to aggression. We are prone to trying to dominate one another. So much of world history is filled with violence people fighting against people, attempting to control one another, attempting to acquire one another's property. So in fact, we have to come to terms with this reality. Why is it that we are so aggressive? Why has it been determined that compared to the animals, we bear this stamp of aggressiveness? Tonight, I want to share with you a passage from the prophet Isaiah. The prophets were, of course, muddled in the politics of their own days, just as we are muddled in the politics of our time. But every now and then, in the prophetic writings of the New Testament, we have passages such as we have this evening. When the prophets have a vision beyond the, the circumstances of their lives, they have a vision by which they leap beyond their times. And they have a vision of a glorious future. So hear these words from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 2. The prophet writes, In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. 
What a vision of peace is this passage from Isaiah. This passage is so profound, uh, someone saw fit to include it in the later book of Micah in the Old Testament. This very passage is found twice in the Old Testament. It has such a vision of peace. People are drawn to it. It tells of how people take their agricultural tools, their farming instruments, such as plowshares, and they turn uh, their weapons of war into these agricultural tools. Their swords become plowshares. They take the weapons of war and they turn them into tools for use on a farm. Nations shall no longer lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And then the passage concludes, O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. And this is what I want to share with you this evening. You follow the news like me. You know that Russia is stockpiling weapons and lining up troops on the borders of Ukraine. You know that the nation of China is seeking to control Taiwan. You know in our own nation in this very season, people are smashing and grabbing things that don't belong to them, breaking in the stores in broad daylight and by force claiming property that is not their own. People are aggressive. People are violent. Humanity is turned toward evil. And yet we have this vision from Isaiah tonight. This call from the prophet. O house of Jacob, let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let us walk in God's light of peace. Wherever you are this evening, from wherever you are watching in this holiday season, you can't be too far away from the beautiful lights of the season. Take some time in the coming days to see the lights all around you in the evening and allow the peace and serenity of those lights to fall upon you and to speak to your heart and to begin to change your thoughts and your ways so that all of us together would be drawn into God's way of peace. The transformation this passage speaks of tonight is very possible by the grace of God. We can be changed. We don't have to be aggressive people. We don't have to be always turning toward the ways of violence. Coming to God. Returning to God. Inviting others to join us in returning to God. We can be transformed by the peaceful ways of God. We can be transformed by the light of God. And begin to live in greater harmony in our homes, within our relationships, in our workplaces. May God bless all of us by the amazing divine light of Christ to become more and more people of peace as God's people. Let us show the world the way to peace through Jesus Christ. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? We thank you, O God of grace, for your light coming into the world through Jesus Christ. We hear your call tonight calling us to turn away from violence and war, to walk in your ways of peace. What a passage is this from Isaiah tonight, the universal pilgrimage of the nations to your holy mountain, where we will all be taught by you, learning of your ways, receiving the instruction in your ways of peace. O oh God, lead us in this way of peace in this Advent season. In greater and greater ways, transform our lives so that we would become people of peace in the world, leading others into your ways of peace. 
Let us walk in your peaceful light now and always. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight, and join us again next Wednesday evening at 7.30. And as we look ahead to Christmas Eve, we will have two Christmas Eve worship services here at 5 o'clock p.m., then another one at 7.30 p.m., and then later in the evening at 11 o'clock p.m., by our live streaming, we will broadcast a Christmas Eve devotion here from the sanctuary. Join us at 7.30 p.m. for our live stream broadcast, or join us in the sanctuary at 5 p.m. or 7.30 p.m., and then later at 11 p.m. before you lay your heads down to sleep, join us for a Christmas Eve devotion at 11 p.m. God bless you all with a peaceful night. Thank you for joining us.